We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back with Scott Cassenza, Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor on Liberty Nation Radio, head coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I'm your host, Mark Angelides. Now, we've been covering, we've been running the gamut, really, on amendments today, Scott, haven't we? We've covered yes, the, the Eighth Amendment, we've covered the Second Amendment, the First Amendment, three of my favorites. But there's also another one, and that's the Fourth Amendment, Scott. And that seems to be much in the news nowadays because, well, let's be fair, people are going into homes that they do not own, taking possession of those homes, and then having the full support of local police departments when saying, hey, I, I got to stay here as a squatter. And that seems to me to be very much a Fourth Amendment issue, isn't it, Scott? I don't see it that way. Okay. Um, I, uh, it's a civil law issue. Yes. Uh, the Fourth Amendment is a prohibition against government action. Okay. Uh, initially as applied to the federal government and then incorporated against the state. So yeah. it prohibits the state or federal government from doing many things, right? But this is about private action. This is about individual actors who are occupying private property and the owners of the rightful owners of that property wish them, you know, wish to be free from their, <laughs> their presence in that property. So I, I don't know how that why you think the Fourth Amendment is is the key implication for this. Uh... Because the protections of the people within the house are being uh, administered by the state, and of course it's being incorporated through the states, right? And so the people who turn up to get their the houses that they own back, they're being hauled off and charged with trespass, and, and that to me seems as though that's the state taking an intervention in what should be a civil matter. So. Police officers, Counselor, are not well suited. <laughs> Police officers are not well suited to understand who is the rightful owner of a piece of property. And what I mean by that is sure. plenty of property in America is owned. Uh, you know, you can imagine a case where um, siblings are fighting over a property that's been passed down and a brother and a sister or cousins are saying, oh, no, I'm the owner of that. Oh, no, I am. Oh, no. They left it to me. Well, that will's being challenged. And a police officer literally called to a scene at, you know, 9 p.m. on a Sunday night. They, they don't have a grounding in property law. They don't know what the hell to make of it. But if one party is occupying uh, a, a property and one is not occupying it, police officers are, are they're, you know, classically trained to keep the peace. And so the most likely path forward to keep the peace in that matter is to say to the party challenging those who are currently occupying the structure, you need to go to civil court and get mm -hmm. an order to evict those folks. And in the meantime, the, to leave them be. And I don't think, broadly speaking, that's a problem. I think that, you know, it, we should encourage police officers to work to keep the police, to deescalate, and not expect them oh, yeah. to be lawyers, you know, in action, basically. Yes, to me, it, it seems that this uh, idea of staying in property that you don't own, it was kind of exacerbated during the, the, the back end of the pandemic where there was a federal moratorium on evictions. Oh, and the clogging of the courts, Mark. The, it, exa and exacerbate, I think, is an understatement. Absolutely. Mm. And I would say to you, you know, based on my statement, I don't support, you know, squatting or squatters. <laughs> And I think that governments actually have an easy solution for this, which is to create an efficient mechanism for which property owners can seek eviction proceedings. There are many jurisdictions whereby uh, a holdover tenant, for instance, which is the classic uh, squatter, not somebody who's sort of like sure. lying in wait for a vacancy to kind of, but holdover tenants are classic. So you pay your rent until a certain amount of time, you lose your job, you stop paying your rent, and you don't move out. That's a holdover tenant. There are jurisdictions in this country where you're going to be out that first month, basically, or maybe the second month. And then there are jurisdictions where you're going to be there for two years. Um, and so because of the way the courts are handling those things. And so that's not a complaint against the executives or police power, Mark. That's a complaint against the efficient uh, running of our courts. The, the key thing is, is I've always felt that a country that doesn't protect property rights in a robust way is essentially a failed state because we see this for the, you know, all, all of the, the, the communism that didn't work that time all the time for the time before, uh, when the state, uh, ends up not protecting 
the rights of property owners or farm owners specifically during the Russian Revolution, let's say. Um, and and that it, that's really just the precipice of a state collapsing upon itself. And I th think a lot of people are worried about that, especially when there's videos of uh, illegal migrants sending out information to others saying, you can just come and get a house. You wait for it to be empty. You go in, you fake a lease. And this is going all around social media. And it wouldn't surprise me if people were doing it. It, uh, it certainly seems if it is that easy that people are. And yet, as you point out, there's a number of states that aren't stepping in to protect people other than say, well, you've got to go to civil court and that could take two years or more, by which point, of course, people could have lost their houses. This is why we can't have nice things. And I, I, I meant that I understand, yeah. you know, it's humorous, but I also meant it to distill it to its essence. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you can't protect property uh, rights and enforce private property, you will not have a society worth defending in any way. It'll be a tragedy of the commons. And why would you pay to upkeep your property if there's a squatter in it? Why would you have the lawn mowed? Why would you make repairs? It's going to be a blight in the neighborhood. I don't think the squatters are going to be, uh, uh, you know, calling the asphalt company to, to come re redo it in the springtime or the summer uh, like the homeowner would be. Um, so, yeah, it's a great tragedy for all involved. And the blame needs to be put where it is and the people need to demand that the courts move efficiently with these things. Um, and so many of our problems in the, in the kind of justice and political areas are seen mostly where there is no competition for leadership mm. with party versus party. So whether it's a endemic Republican, never, uh, never a uh, Democrat gets a chance or endemic Democrat, Republican cannot get a chance to win because what happens is during the primary process, uh, there's little incentive to uh, reveal the, corruption and, uh, you know, malfeasance because there are too many friends involved. And so they don't, yeah. they kind of, they, they don't argue about those main things. And the there, people there's, suffer. there's no threat within a closed system. Scott Casenza, thanks ever so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. And that's all we have time for on this special edition of Liberty Nation Radio, heard coast to coast on the Radio America Network. I've been your host, Mark Angelides. I'd like to give special thanks to our guest today, Scott Cassenza, Liberty Nation's legal affairs editor. And of course, to you at home for taking the time to tune in and join us on this little adventure. Thanks for listening. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. <laughs> Don't get caught up in the media madness. Join our movement for free thinking and free speech at LibertyNation.com. Publishing news and analysis 24-7 with original articles by our team of authors who tell it like it is. Join us each week for online TV shows, The Uprising Podcast, and Liberty Nation Radio. We believe in free thinking and free speech. We are LibertyNation.com.